Anyone who works in a nursery works near pesticides. What is a pesticide? It's a chemical used to kill or control pests, such as insects, plant diseases, and weeds. Some pesticides, called plant growth regulators, are used to change the way a plant grows. All pesticides are poisonous. Some are highly poisonous, while others are only slightly so. Since pesticides can be dangerous, state and federal governments have passed laws to make sure they are handled safely. One of these laws states that workers who mix, load, or apply pesticides must be trained to use the products they handle. In this presentation, we will provide a part of the training which employees need in order to handle pesticides safely. There are four ways that a pesticide can get into your body. Through your mouth, when the pesticide is accidentally or intentionally swallowed. Through your lungs, if you inhale pesticide spray or fumes. Through your eyes, if the chemical splashes, or if you rub your eyes with contaminated hands or clothing and through the skin. Most people don't realize how readily pesticides can penetrate the skin and cause illness. Actually, the majority of pesticide-related illnesses in the nursery are the result of skin contamination. If you want to avoid injury, you need to know how to use pesticides safely. When you're about to use a pesticide, the first thing you do after you carefully read the label is to open the container. Make sure the container is on a flat, stable surface. You don't want it to tip over and spill on you. When opening a paper container, use scissors or a sharp knife. If you rip it open, the powder can come flying out and cover your face and skin. Many eye injuries happen this way. When you pour a liquid formulation, put what you are pouring it into on the ground or on some other flat, low surface. Never pour into a container that is at eye level. The closer to the floor you work, the less of your body will get contaminated if the pesticide spills. Never try to pour a pesticide from a container that is too heavy to control. Get someone to help you. If you apply pesticides, make sure that your equipment is in good condition. A poorly maintained spray tank may leak or even explode. Learn where all the potential danger points are in your sprayer. Check connecting joints frequently for leaks. Hoses should be examined regularly since they can wear out and burst. Know the proper pressure for applying each pesticide and make sure that the correct pressure is maintained. If the tank is overpressurized, not only do you run a greater risk of something bursting, you also empty the tank before covering all the plants you wish to treat. This can lead to foliage burn and even the death of plants in some cases. The tank should be cleaned out thoroughly after each application. Material left in the tank can cause corrosion of metal and rubber parts, which can weaken the equipment and cause dangerous malfunctions. When rinsing out spray equipment, Run the water through the spray hose several times to make sure all pesticide residue is flushed out. Mixers and loaders who work with highly dangerous liquid formulations must use a closed transfer system, which takes the pesticide out of the original container and puts it in the spray tank without exposing it to the air. Check your system often to make sure it's in good working order and free of leaks. When handling pesticides, be sure to wear all the required protective equipment. Remember, skin exposure is the major cause of pesticide-related illness. So, protect yourself. Wear impermeable gloves. Cloth, canvas, and leather gloves will not work since they are absorbent and can actually increase exposure by absorbing the pesticides and holding them next to your skin. Lined gloves should be avoided too because the lining is often made of an absorbent material, such as cotton. If you are making an overhead application, tuck your sleeves inside your gloves so that the spray material doesn't get inside your sleeves. If you are applying the pesticide at arm level or lower, 
then the glove should be tucked inside your sleeves. Some workers prefer to fold their gloves over, forming a cuff, but this can serve as a reservoir for the pesticide, which can then spill out and contaminate them. For overhead applications, an impermeable head cover is necessary to protect your head from dripping plants. The top of the head is one of the most absorbent parts of the body. It must be protected. Waterproof boots will protect your feet. When necessary, wear goggles or a face shield to protect your eyes. Some pesticides should only be used if you are wearing a respirator. Facial hair, such as a beard and sideburns, will keep the respirator from forming a perfect seal. So if you work with a respirator, you should be clean shaven. There are different kinds of respirators for different types of pesticides. Most have replaceable cartridges with filters. These cartridges should be replaced as indicated on the package in which they come, or sooner, if you start smelling the pesticide while wearing the mask. Make sure you know where extra cartridges are stored and keep track of their hourly use so you know when to replace them. When working with pesticides, use clothing that covers your arms and legs. Some pesticides require the use of special waterproof clothing. If you mix liquid pesticides, you must wear a waterproof apron to protect against spilling the material on your clothing. The pesticide as it comes out of the container is concentrated and dangerous, so be careful. Mixing is the operation during which the most serious accidents occur. After each application, wash your protective equipment. Keep your gloves on until you have washed everything else and then wash your gloves before taking them off. Change your clothes after working with pesticides. Pesticide contaminated clothing must be laundered before it's worn again, but wash it separately from the family wash and rinse the washing machine afterwards. Shower at the end of the day and put on clean clothing. Common sense will help save you from unnecessary pesticide exposure. Never eat, drink, or smoke while working with pesticides. Always wash your hands before eating, smoking, or going to the bathroom. Tobacco absorbs pesticides, so don't carry your cigarettes with you while working. Keep in mind that your gloves and the rest of your clothing is covered with pesticide residue. So avoid wiping your face with your hands and sleeves. A person who handles pesticides has a responsibility to protect other workers from exposure. If you've been working in the pesticide storage area, make sure it's properly locked before you leave. And never leave pesticides or contaminated spray equipment laying around. When a pesticide container is empty, it should be properly disposed of according to the instructions that you've been given by your supervisor. Cans and bottles containing liquid formulations should be rinsed three times when they are empty, and the rinse water should be added to the spray tank in which the last of the pesticide is being used. For containers of less than five gallons, rinse by filling them one quarter full with water. Secure the cap or lid and agitate so that water reaches all surfaces. Repeat this procedure at least three times. For containers of five gallons or more, use the same procedure but fill them one fifth full of water. Don't try to reuse pesticide containers as it's impossible to eliminate all the pesticide residues. If a spill occurs while you're working, let your supervisor know immediately. If the supervisor isn't nearby, send someone to find him. Don't abandon the site of the spill because someone could come along and get contaminated. 
Before you spray, make sure that the person in charge of the greenhouse knows what you are about to do. Never start spraying until you are sure that everyone is out. It's easy to overlook someone in the greenhouse, so be careful. In order to protect yourself and your fellow workers, you must know the symptoms of pesticide poisoning. Symptoms of mild insecticide poisoning may include headache, dizziness, nausea, blurred vision, a feeling of weakness or tiredness. More serious poisoning symptoms include an excessively runny nose, drooling, trembling, chest pains, breathing difficulty, and in some extreme cases, convulsions and coma. Fumigants, such as methyl bromide, can cause many of the same early symptoms. Also, eye inflammation, slurred speech, lack of coordination, and a high body temperature. Sometimes the victim of fumigant poisoning appears to be drunk. Herbicides used around the nursery can also make you ill. For example, Roundup has caused some minor eye and skin injuries, so use eye protection for mixing and loading. Fungicides can also cause eye and skin injuries and can make you sick if they are not handled properly. Be careful. If you or another person starts feeling sick while working around pesticides, tell your supervisor. The number of an emergency medical facility should be posted in your workplace. Know where it is and be prepared to call it. The number of the nearest poison control center should also be posted. You can call this number to find out how to help a poisoning victim. You must be able to give the name of the pesticide in order to get the correct information. Know how to administer first aid. If you or someone else becomes contaminated while working with pesticides, remove the contaminated clothing immediately and rinse the affected area. It is important to act quickly. Most pesticides are rapidly absorbed by the skin, but if you wash them off quickly, you can avoid a serious illness. If a pesticide gets into someone's eye, rinse it with a gentle stream of cool, clean water. Rinsing should continue for at least 15 minutes. Hold the lid open to make sure the eye is actually getting rinsed. If a pesticide is swallowed, check the label to see whether you should or should not induce vomiting. Vomiting can be induced by use of syrup of Ipecac or by putting a blunt object at the back of the victim's throat. Do not try to induce vomiting if the victim is unconscious or having convulsions. Never use salt to induce vomiting. If the pesticide's label says not to induce vomiting, it's because this would cause further harm to the victim. Sometimes other suggestions will be given, such as giving the victim large amounts of water or milk. Check the label first, or better yet, know in advance what the first aid procedures are for the pesticide you're using. When handling certain pesticides for 30 hours or more in a single month, you must have periodic blood tests to make sure the chemicals are not affecting your health. The first blood test should be administered before you begin working with these materials. Not all pesticides require this kind of blood test only those that belong to certain chemical families. Ask your supervisor if you are working with these types of chemicals. Every pesticide comes with a label. The label contains instructions for handling the product correctly and safely. It tells you how much to use and gives directions for mixing and application. The label also tells you what precautions you must take to protect yourself, other people, the plants you are treating, and the environment. Never handle a pesticide until you understand all the instructions and precautions included in the labeling. If you cannot read English, ask your supervisor to tell you what the label says.
Don't forget, if you are working with pesticides, your safety and the safety of your fellow workers is in your hands. Handling pesticides carelessly can make you sick. So remember the training you receive and do your job safely.